In this video, we're going to talk about how you can model an IKEA lack. This is a popular piece of furniture for people that are building their own enclosure for a 3D printer. I'm trying to do the same thing, so needed to model it up. I'm going to mention some of those missing dimensions that are out on the website, as well as an expert tip at the end. Stick around. So here's the specs. Okay, so we can start at the top and work our way down. Uh, we could do the origin in the corner, we could do the origin in the center. Let's do in centimeters, it's 550 millimeters wide, 550 deep. All right, so that's the first part of it. And if we were to do, we could do a reference plane down 450. Okay, so that's where we're working to. That's the ground plane that we need to work to. Okay, so looking out over the web, it looks like it might be 50 millimeters deep for that tabletop. And then we have uh, the four legs and those should extend down to that plane. So if we start our sketch on this bottom face. So a couple ways we could do this could just sketch the first one and then mirror that and this should be this dimension so I have a bunch of different reference dimensions the thing that I do have is this 444 144 mil, 444 millimeters between them these two should be equal once we know that value equal great Okay, this should be square, so if I, you know, make these two equal, that's square, great. I'm gonna make these reference, construction, and then extrude this down, new body, just to separate it, great. Now I have that first leg, and this leg should measure if I click on it, it should be 400 millimeters. Good, that's checking out, excellent. So how do I do these four legs quickly without sketching them? Sketching them would not be hard, right? But um, let's do um, a couple mid planes since I don't have planes right in the middle like I should. Had I put the origin in the center, I would, but I can do mid planes very quickly. I love this infusion, how I can select these two ends and it creates those mid planes. And what I want to do is do a mirror. And I'm going to mirror a body since I have that body across this plane. Great. Right click, repeat, and mirror both of these bodies across this mid plane. Great. So they're all going off that original body. If this gets changed, that first one, then it'll get updated. Okay, let's turn off our planes for a minute. So that's my IKEA LAC, very quick file, but I'm gonna use that later in an assembly as I start trying to design my enclosure. So the expert tip for today, if we're looking at when we did that original leg, you may have been thinking, why not? You might be thinking, why not go ahead and sketch all four legs or do a sketch pattern? and you definitely can now if i knew that i wanted to be able to control all four legs separately so in my design intent i'm kind of thinking that right now they might happen to be all the same value right so right now if i click on this line i know that this is 53 and it's 53 wide okay so if i did 53 and let's just say that i'm, I'm going to keep it's always going to be square, these uh, legs, that's fine, but I'm going to do dimensions for all of them. Why would I do that? Because the reason is, is I want to be able to have more control in the future, right? So maybe for right now, this is how it's going to be extruded as four different legs, but maybe at some point I might actually make it staggered where this is 60 and this one is 70 and this is 55. Not sure why I would do that, but that's just the design intent I have, is I need to be able to modify these legs in the future. So if we then extrude all of them at once, 
and include all these extrusions in one, and you can see they kind of vary in their size because of the sketch. So that's one good reason to sketch everything out versus mirroring it. Uh, makes it easier for me to modify each one. It allows me to control it with more specificity. Hey, so if you're looking for more exercises, check out this playlist I made for you. If you're looking for... You might also want to check out this other video that YouTube says is a great fit. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe for me, and you'll get notified when the latest Fusion 360 tips are available.